Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. We're gonna be talking about how much money do you need to have in retirement? There's a variation on that um, question. It can be, will I outlive my uh, retirement account? Will I have enough money to retire? How much money do I need to retire? There's a number of different ways you can ask the question, but we're gonna get into exactly what you need to do in order to make that question be something you don't have anxiety over. And we're also gonna be talking about the hidden secret behind all successful retirees. What are they doing to make sure that they have a successful retirement? We're gonna be talking about three things that you can do immediately to, to catch up, if you will, if you think that you're behind schedule on your, your retirement. And what are three things that could really hurt you if these things happen to you before you retire? And so those are gonna be really important to know. We're gonna talk about some surprising statistics on retirement, not that I'm a, a great uh, cheerleader for statistics because after all, some statistics actually don't help you. It's kind of nice to know, but it's not gonna actually pay the bills. We're also gonna be talking about some case examples, so actual client case examples without giving you know, private details away, but we're gonna be sharing with you a couple of examples of actual retirees and what they, uh, the retirement looks like for them. And then we're actually gonna go into, so stay tuned for this, the number one thing you need to focus on in order to have a successful retirement. Hi everyone, my name is David Aaron. I am a financial advisor uh, working in Toronto uh, with Aaron Wealth Management, my own company. And I help my clients manage the things that they cannot afford to lose. If you're new to this channel, I would appreciate it if you would just go down and hit that subscribe button, like and share, uh, and make some comments on some of the videos. You know that action that you do by just subscribing helps to actually grow my channel so that I can get in front of more people and help as many people as I can. The videos here are all educational in mind. Let's get into it. There's a lot of videos out there on financial planning topics and some are gonna give you the answers you're looking for and some are not gonna give you the, an the answers. Um, my video today is gonna to be very specific about how much money you're gonna to need to have during retirement and exactly how to actually acquire that amount of money as well. So how to narrow it down, how to get to that number. So what is your number? If you wanna put that in your comments, please feel welcome to do that. What is your number? And, um, and then I'm gonna share with you exactly how to get there and how to avoid some of the pitfalls during retirement. There is no magic formula, you know, but I can tell you this, we have worked out, um, not so much the, the magic formula, but we put in a lot of effort into understanding financial planning products, time value of money, understanding your goals, and you know our experience, our education, our knowledge are really the skill sets that we bring to bear to be able to help you solve this problem. So let's go over some rules of thumb, if you will. There's a lot of rules, or there's several rules of thumb, and these rules of thumb are designed to help you um, figure out exactly how much money you need to have in retirement. If you haven't talked to an advisor and you're just at home, kitchen table, take out some paper, and you're trying to figure it out yourself, there's some rules of thumb that can help you get to that, kind of estimate your way there. You can say, okay, what would be a, a, a rough estimation of getting to a number? And from there, I can try to be more accurate with it. So rules of thumb are kind of that way. So let's look at one rule of thumb, the 10% rule. The 10% rule is really about you saving 10% of your money towards your retirement. So it's not something that you use tomorrow. This is you paying it forward so that you can retire with enough money um, at your retirement date. The 20% rule is, well, some people don't subscribe to the idea 10% is gonna be enough money given the fact that you know home values have gone up so much expenses have gone up in, in just about all areas of our life. And so maybe 10% isn't enough. Maybe 20% is what you need. So just translate that, multiply that 10% do times two so you can have enough money. So that would be another way to kind of estimate your way there. The other rule is the rule of 72. This is an old math rule that says, how quickly will my money double? You just basically, you're taking 72 divided by your annual rate of return, and that'll give you the number of years it'll take for your money to double. It's nice to know, um, but it's not the thing that's gonna get you feeling you know, all warm and uh, bubbly about your retirement because your retirement is more than your rate of return. The 4% rule, well, you see this a lot in uh, just about everywhere on the internet. You see a lot of advisors talking about it. You know, the 4% rule 
First of all, I'm going to tell you right away, I don't agree with it. It's, it's only a way for you to estimate, will you have enough money in retirement? 4% rule is basically saying if you used or withdrew 4% of your money every year, that if you only did 4%, that would last you at least 30 years in retirement. So that's, it's kind of nice to know, but I'm going to get into why that's not an accurate way to do that. And you'll see that in, in the slides coming up. The 25% rule, this is um, actually actually accurate, okay? So if you think about how long you're gonna live in retirement, on average, you're gonna live about 25 years in retirement. Men and women are different by a few years, but essentially a healthy person, and there's a slide that's gonna to speak to that, um, is gonna live 25 years. So one way to estimate, which isn't gonna be accurate, understand this number is gonna be huge, and that's not the number you need, but it's just a way to get there, and that is to take your annual living expense and multiply that by 25 times. And that'll give you an, a number that is going to be astronomical. Okay. And the truth of it is you don't need that because as you're using your money, it's your, as you're doing withdrawals, you're actually making a rate of return. And that, that money is actually um, helping you to offset the withdrawal that you're doing. Unless your withdrawal rate is like 20% a year, then you're going to deplete your asset pretty quickly. But essentially, if you were, let's say, withdrawing at 4%, but you're getting 7% on your money, then you can see you're actually making more than you're withdrawing. So you know that money's gonna last long. Um, but not everybody um, can get 7%. Some people, that's a rate of return that is too risky for them during retirement. So then there's a 70% rule. You hear this a lot. You'll hear, why um, do financial planning professionals say, you'll need 70% of your current annual income in retirement. Why do they say that? Because they're trying to answer the question generically because they don't know who you are. They don't know who is on the other end of this computer watching the screen, how much money you've been saving, what your risk tolerance is, what your time horizon is. So they can't just say, Boom, you need this amount of money. So they'll say 70% seems to be an accurate amount. So that helps you to estimate your way to getting that number. Every situation, every investor is different. It's important that you actually work with someone to get down to what is your actual number. Now let's just do a quick review on some of the ways that you would sort of figure out what your number is. You know, this is really just going back to kind of like an accounting question, right? What are some of the areas that you have to consider when you're thinking about retirement? So one of them is what is your retirement age? When are you actually planning to retire? And I've said in other videos before, and I'll link it up here, and that is your retirement date probably won't be your retirement date. More than 52% of the population do not retire at the time that they think they're gonna do, and that is largely um, due because of a disability, um, their inability to work. Um, what kind of lifestyle do you want in retirement? You wanna live large, you wanna live moderately. Um, what kind of lifestyle are you trying to achieve in retirement? Will you have any private pension? You know, teachers, firefighters, government employees have defined benefit plans, they'll have an income. Do you have an income through your employer as a pension? That's something to consider. What is your health gonna be like? Um, it's hard to know, but some people might have poor health going into the retirement, so they kind of expect they're gonna have poor health during retirement, but that's an added expense for you. The other things you'll wanna work out, and that is income-wise. So how much CPP and old age security you're gonna have? Do you have any passive income like real estate properties? Um, are you an Amazon uh, seller? Are you a YouTuber, you're making some money? What is the um, status of your current savings? So how much money do you currently have today? What's the savings rate that you have or that you're using today? We're gonna to get into all of that, but you know what? the the real issue is here is you're asking all the wrong questions. I'm not trying to beat you up. What I'm trying to say is if you're thinking about a pool of money that you need to have, you're going at it a much more difficult way. You really need to be asking just simply two questions. And these are actually probably the most important questions. And I know you, you just went, what are you talking about only two questions? And a lot of advisors around there will probably say, there are so many other questions. Yeah, there are, but there are also two very important questions. That is how much income do you need during retirement? So stop thinking about the, the pile of cash and start thinking about 
how much am I gonna spend every year in retirement? So that is actually an important exercise. It's very difficult for some people who haven't figured it out. And then how much income does my financial plan project that I'm going to have at retirement? So how much do I need based on what I have today and projections of what I'll have in the future when I plan to retire? What is that financial plan say I'm going to actually have in terms of income. So forget about the notion of how much money. Start focusing on getting these two questions answered. So the hidden secret. So back to the beginning of the video, we talked about what is the hidden secret of all successful financial, uh, all successful retirees, and that is having a written financial plan. You know, you wouldn't build a house without any architectural drawings, right? It'd be unheard of. Where do the windows go? How much wood do we need? Um, well, how many rooms are in the house? What other kinds of, uh, of um, equipment are you gonna need to build a house? How much is it gonna cost? How long is it gonna take? Do we have all the legal things done? Like the list is endless, right? You would never build, you would never think about building a house without any architectural drawings and you get those done. But it seems to me like when people think about their financial planning, they just say, well, I won't make a financial plan. I'll just keep putting the same amount of money in every year and it'll probably be okay. That's just not a great strategy. And so the number one hidden secret to having a successful retirement is having a written financial plan. You know, the financial plan um, is so important because the number one, you know, the number one concern people have about their retirement and that is, will I have enough money to retire? That's kind of like the whole background of this um, this video today was how much money is it gonna cost for me to retire? Well, it's based on the fear of saying, will I have enough? And so a financial plan really helps you answer that question. And they're probably the reason why that people have that fear is because two out of 10 people actually have a written financial plan. So that might lend some some evidence as to why people are worried that they're not gonna have enough money to retire is because they just don't have a written financial plan. Financial plan is so important for you. So the first step here is really, if you were just to sit at a table and kind of map out um, without, without getting into a financial plan right now, I'm just gonna give you a couple of steps to help you get on your way, okay? And then when you have that in front of you, you can use that to talk to an advisor with. So the first step is to add up all of your expected retirement income streams, right? So we talked about CPP, old age security, any pension income, any passive income. Um, maybe are you gonna work in retirement? Is there gonna be some kind of employment income um, and pension income? The next thing, so put that on paper, add it all up and it comes to this number, X, okay? Then you're gonna add up all of your expected costs. So how much you will need to fund your lifestyle every year. If you can't figure it out on an annually basis, just think about it as a monthly basis. What are our expected um, ex lifestyle expenses? You know, some of those things aren't gonna disappear, right? You're gonna have, if you're in a home, you're gonna have taxes, you have to pay property taxes, you have to pay on the house, you have water and you have heat and hydro, those things are not gonna uh, disappear. Um, you're gonna have some food costs, you might have a car, some travel expenses. So there, there's a telephone and cable, internet and all that. Those kinds of things will probably be relatively constant, but there's gonna be other additional spending that you're gonna do. So those are the things that you need to map out. Then the third thing is the plan. This is where you need to develop a really well thought out plan. So if you have an idea now as to how much you want in terms of lifestyle, what the cost of that's gonna be, and you have an idea right now as to ballpark how much income you're gonna have, now you need to take that together on a financial plan, have an advisor work with you on how to actually improve that situation. This is really important. So there are three actions. Let's get into three actions you can take right now to immediately get you back on track. Number one, <laughs> work with an advisor. I know this is, I know this is kind of like, oh, that's cheap, right? You're, you're supporting your own industry. But you know what? The statistics are that when working with a financial advisor for more than 15 years, on average, homes have, so households have 
more than 290% more money to use at retirement than compared to the ones that don't use a financial advisor. So the math, the statistical uh, math is in your favor of working with an advisor. And so if you're, you know, you're thinking about, I can do it myself, the odds are actually against you. So let's think about the number one thing out of the three things is work with an advisor. Let's look at just a, some statistics. Now, I don't buy into all the statistics, right? Some statistics don't help you, some does, but let's just have a look at some of these things. This is really interesting. You look at the uh, the first line here, 60 or 56% of people who are 65 years of age or older think that they don't have enough money to warrant using a financial advisor to have somebody help them. And that might be something you may want to revisit because it might be the fact that you're not using a financial advisor is the reason why you don't have enough money. It kind of, it connects uh, together. Ages 55 to 64, more than half of those people still don't think they have enough money to use a financial advisor. And I gotta, I gotta somehow change your mind on this because it's so important that you work with someone. A lot of people actually just don't know who to trust. And so that's where you begin the process of trying to figure out who could I talk to. Um, you can ask your friends who they talk to. You can, I mean, if you were to interview advisors, just as you would be interviewing them at, for a job, really. And I, I think this is an awesome thing to do when I meet people. It's happened on occasion where we're in the middle of, the, of meeting that person and I realize, oh my goodness, they're interviewing me. They're actually not just thinking about me, but they're thinking probably about three or four or five other advisors. This is an interview. This isn't a done thing. They actually want to know my character, my, my philosophies, um, and they want referrals to clients. So these things um, do happen, by the way. Um, a little bit deeper information. So if you look here, and I don't want to spend too much time on this, but if you look at income on the right-hand side, this is really was really the surprising um, thing about this uh, this um, survey, if you will. Sixty percent of people making more than eighty thousand dollars a year don't have a financial advisor. So it goes back to that slide just before when they say, you know, fifty-five to sixty-four, more than half of those people don't want use a financial advisor because they don't think they have enough money. And here we're seeing that people making more than $80,000 a year don't think they have enough money to, to work with an advisor. Absolutely alarming. If you look at the, the bottom left-hand corner and we see the age groups, okay, I understand 18, 20, 21, those kinds of people. Maybe they're not making a lot of money, although there are a lot of uh, people doing social media um, and YouTubers are making a killing, making a lot of money. But look at the age group from 35 to 44, 72% not using a financial advisor, 60%. I mean, the numbers are actually kind of surprising. So I, I understand um, there's a lot of people out there that are not getting the kind of advice they need. And I would encourage you to change that, given the fact that you know that 290% more money for your home if you use an advisor. Again, over the top right-hand corner, I do not have enough a big enough portfolio uh, 44% of people who um, making over $80,000 a year. And it didn't matter. Look at male, female. They both feel the same way. So the second thing, of course, is a written financial plan. This is, I don't know how much more I need to say and try to convince you. I've said this in a number of videos. You'll see a link to a video up above that we talked just about um, having written financial plans. You know, advisor's profession is the science of making money. I want you to think about that next time you look at that statistic or you ask yourself why you're not working with a financial advisor. Their whole profession is about the science of making money. That's it. We're not gonna give you recipes and I'm not gonna tell you how to decorate your house. My only function is to make you more money and to protect the assets that you have and then try to make other things come true, like giving it away to charities or to your children in a tax efficient way. There is no other priority other than that. That is our number one task, is making you money. And there's a science behind it. And this is why I want you to encourage you to go to a financial advisor. You're tapping into an advisor's knowledge and training and experience that's been passed down through generations of advisors training other advisors on how to help their clients achieve financial freedom. And your financial plan allows you to see 
the impact of your financial decisions before you commit to it. That's the beauty of a financial plan. Can you see any other place other than if you work for a company and they say, look, can you come up with a plan, throw in our budget there, see if these things are achievable for us to achieve this target of growth. That's a plan and you guys get to work and you do it. It's no different for your own life. That's what a financial plan does. Let me make a number of decisions, apply some math to it, some science, pour in some experience and knowledge from advisors that have been doing it for 20 years, and then see what the outcome of that would be. And then I don't like that outcome. Could we change a few things and turn some dials and see what would happen if we did those minor changes? What would be the outcome? You get to have all these scenarios in a financial plan, you know, played out before you actually put $1 in. That's the beauty of a financial plan. That's the power of a financial plan. So I'm gonna share with you, this is just um, a, a financial dashboard. Each one of my clients get a financial dashboard. It's designed to help you um, understand in a snapshot of where you are at. This is connected to the financial plan that might be 80 or 80, 18 or 20 pages deep, but we consolidate all that information onto one page. Is a one page or scan it real quick, you know exactly where you are. I'll briefly go over it. If, if you want to know more detail about this on a one-on-one -on -one session, I'm happy to go through it. But let's just look at the top left-hand corner. We talk about net network. And by the way, all of these boxes are the areas that you have said to me, these are the things I want you to actually help me with. So we can you know, swap them out. If you have different goals, we'll just swap them in. And then that's your financial plan. Those are the main goals that you want me focused on to help you improve. So in this case, net worth. Net worth, people need to increase their net worth because if they're gonna borrow money, get mortgages for homes, apply for anything, they need to have good high net worth. And also people wanna know, am I actually improving my worth over time? Um, the top right hand corner is about portfolio. So many people spend their time focused on rates of return. It's nice, it's nice to know, but it's not the thing that's actually gonna get you to retirement. Your rate of return isn't paying you your monthly bills during your retirement. It's really the plan, it says, all of these details that's really securing your lifestyle of retirement. So it's nice to know, but we might have a target in terms of how much you need to get. But I guarantee you, 23% um, is probably not sustainable year over year. It's nice to brag about it, but your financial plan is gonna say a completely different number. But we share that number year over year so you can see what kind of rate of return you're getting year over year. The, the middle um, corner on the right, portfolio gains. This is the rubber hits the road. How much money have I made for you? What is the actual amount of money that your advisor has made for you? Can you actually look it up and say, this is what I've done? This is how much I've made? So instead of you trying to look through a portfolio and look for where, um, how, much, how much money you put in versus how much you have today, it's right there in front of you. It's, it's hard to avoid. The middle uh, section, total assets, is really important for people because so many people have paid down their home, they have zero mortgage balances, their net worth is $2 million, and you know 85% of that is your home. Well, I got news for you that's not gonna help you retire unless you have plan to do a reverse mortgage or you sell your house. So I like to visually show people that, look, don't, it's nice to say your worth, your net worth is, is large, but how is that really helping your retirement? We need to grow the other pies of your total assets, your tax free savings, your life insurance cash values, your RSPs, what kind of non-registered assets do you have? Do you have any passive incomes coming in? Like we need to actually look at everything together. And of course, some people want help with paying down their debts, whether they're debts for their business or whether they're mortgages on their homes or other properties. They want us to focus on helping them to get that debt paid down quicker. And we track it to, so we can show you, hey, we're, we're uh, doing really well here. We're going to have you debt free in this number of years. That's important for people to see that. Now, the bottom left hand corner arguably is probably the most important part of this dashboard, and that is your retirement income. It's divided into two sections. The first side with the chart tells you year over year how much your income, so how much money your portfolio currently is gonna provide you at the age of whatever retirement, if it's 65, whatever that is. Currently we have that, if all things remain um, the way it's been going, the way we planned, 
you're going to have this amount of money to spend annually. These are annual numbers during retirement. So we set out a goal. I want to have X number of dollars per year to use for lifestyle. Right away, we balance that off. Bang. Will you have enough money to retire? Well, this is telling us how quick or how close we are to getting that number. The second part on the, of that same square is talking about how much money. So the way that this whole started this session was you asked the question, how much money do I need to retire? So we're actually including that. So I'm giving you the one thing that you, the number one thing you should be focused on is income, but I'm also including it from the other way, the way that you were thinking, how much money, a pool of money would I need? And so in this particular case, we're saying 1.35 million. And how much do you have now? 350,000. So that's a reminder to this client. You still got a lot of way to go. Keep going. And then to the right hand side, it just tells you, you know, where are you as a percentage? How close am I to getting um, to retirement? And all these things come with milestones. And when those milestones go off, we send out wonderful messages. Some of them are video messages of congratulations, celebrating another milestone being achieved. It's such a wonderful thing to receive because clients get to cheer their progress. They get to get excited about the the idea that they're that much closer, that they've hit a milestone in their uh, retirement plan. And I think it's so important that you celebrate your achievements and your success in these milestones. But you don't wanna be this guy. <laughs> you don't wanna be this guy. That's You really kinda of wanna be this guy. I mean, he's not as stylish as the guy before, but it looks like he's got a plan and he's working through his plan. So number three, the third thing you can do to impact um, your ability to get on track is you might need a side hustle. So let's say you get into these numbers and you say, I need this amount of money. This is my expenses, this is the kind of lifestyle I have. This is the kind of income I currently have and I don't see any new income coming in. Like there's no inheritance um, or I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna bet my whole entire, my retirement based on when, I'm, when or if I'm ever gonna receive an inheritance. So the problem is gonna be you have a gap. You have a shortfall in the way you want to live during retirement and your capacity to fund it right now. So you might need a side hustle. That means you need to be able to generate the gap, how much you have to um, fill in. So if you're missing 20 grand a year, you're going to need to generate that. Start now. Start putting together a plan to be able to generate $20,000 a year or 30000 whatever that number for you is you're gonna to need to start to start a side hustle. So would you be working part-time? I don't want you to have to work part-time, but some people do because they just, you know, they don't wanna be lonely. They wanna get out, they wanna meet people. And there are some people that don't have kids, they're single, and that is that's a, that is part of their lifestyle. Some other people do it because they need the cash. Um, could you get a pay increase? Could you get a higher paying job? How about starting a side business? Now, I don't wanna say that you know, everybody doing YouTube makes money, but there are literally hundreds and hundreds of ways for you to make enough money, so extra money, to fund your lifestyle. I've said in other videos, I mean, I'll link a, a video here for you. Having a $20,000 additional income in retirement is like having $400,000 riff. Having an extra 400,000, right? Because when you think about how much money you have to take out of RIF, it's going to work out about $20,000. So if you can earn $20,000 part-time, it might be easier earning $20,000 than saving $400,000. Do you follow me? So this is an important consideration. You'll notice here throughout this whole thing, I didn't talk about RSPs, TFSAs, individual pension plans, life insurance. I wasn't talking about here are the products that you need to use in order to provide the amount of money, because that's a different conversation, 100% different conversation, because everybody's situation is different. You know, if you're a business owner, um, an RSP is not the best solution for you. There are a couple other options you should be using, but it, depending on your situation, it may be the only thing because you don't qualify to do the other um, options. So RSP might be the way to go. Um, you might be not healthy and so you can't do life insurance even though is the biggest i'll say the i'm a little impartial to this but it's 
I think one of the biggest ways you can save money for retirement is through life insurance, but I digress. It's very important that you know what your dreams are gonna be. How much are these dreams gonna cost you in retirement? Are you gonna be this couple who gets on a plane and they travel? Um, are you just gonna have your grandkids on the beach and enjoy spending time with them? Maybe you're gonna keep it local and you're just gonna do road trips. And sadly, some of us are actually gonna need home care. These are all things that everyone has to consider because everybody is different and our goals are different. And that's what makes financial planning, that's what makes my job so enjoyable because every time I meet somebody, I can't wait to hear what they have in mind for retirement. And I'm just like, oh wow, like that is, that's a cool retirement. How are we gonna fund that? Do you have any idea how much that might cost? I remember having, just to give you a little anecdote, I remember having a client tell me, I want to buy land and I wanna raise horses on the land and then I wanna bring in kids who are, are disadvantaged, who have um, um, challenges with confidence, bring these kids in and take them horseback riding, get them to interact with horses. That's what I wanna do in retirement. And I'm like totally blown away. And I said, well, do you have any idea what it costs for the land and how much it costs to raise horses? And she said, I have no idea. And so together we went on this journey of understanding everything about what she needed to do in order to make that happen. How much it was gonna cost, what was the lifestyle like, what are all the rules? Um, and it was such an enjoyable experience. Instead of just thinking about the math of how much money, we got to really explore. And that's, that's a lot of what I do with clients is explore their lifestyle and understand that. Because once I do that with one client, I'm able to take that and pass it on to another client and say, look, I, I have clients that have done planning, that have done this, 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 and this, and I can tell you everything about it. Um, that's invaluable. But what if you haven't figured that out yet? What do you do about it? You need somebody that can put all the pieces together. That's the value of working with an advisor. And so on the subject of retirement planning, I'm just gonna give you a survey. Now that survey is one of those things that I think, how does this help you? Like for instance, 37% of uh, all the people said that they didn't have enough money saved for retirement. So my question to you is, how does that help you when you read surveys like that? So I'm, why I'm saying this to you is when you're reading, you know, something, um, a, a blog post in the news, and they'll say, recent survey by one of the banks said that 57% of all people age 50 years of age say they don't have enough money to retire. That might be true, but how does that help you? What you really want to get down to is what is the helpful information, the statistics that it's actually going to help you retire. Statistics about, on average, what do um, retired Canadians spend every year in Canada? That's available to you um, on, can, on, on StatsCan. They have all the information. I include that when I do reviews with people when we're doing financial planning. I'll say, look, here's the average uh, Canadian from um, StatsCan. But I also have like these clients who are retired, living in Florida, living in another province, doing all kinds of different things, activities. Here's how much they spend. So that's the value. So it's important for you to get the actual statistics that are close to your um, retirement goal so that you can be more accurate. So let's talk about a couple scenarios, okay? So to get deeper into how much money you might need, let's talk about if you are a 65-year-old, single 65-year-old, and you're going to retire at 65, and let's say you need $57,000 of income. Why am I saying $57,000? Well, guess what? That is the average income for a single retiree in Canada. That comes right from StatsCan. That's after-tax dollars. So why don't we use that in this example? So in this example, you're going to have about $1,000 from your CPP, about $600 from your old age security. So that's $1,600 a month, almost $20,000 per year. So we know that's the income side, right? No pension in this example, just almost, we'll call it 19 because it's closer to 19 than it is to 20,000. But you need 57. So we're gonna subtract the 57, the 19 from the 57, that comes with 37, eight, let's just call it 40 because it's easier for us to just work through the math. So that means you're gonna have to generate an additional $40,000 somewhere between now and 65 
in order for you to retire. And you have to build into the idea that that 40,000 has to go up by inflation every year, and that's about 2% per year. So that's your target. And I actually have another video. I'll link it up here. Is it this side or that side? I'm not sure. But I'll link that video because there's a video exactly that talks about this gap and what to do about it. So the real goal is not the pool of money. The real goal is how do I generate $40,000 worth of income today for my retirement many years from now. Hopefully you're not doing this exercise at 60 and you're retiring at 62 because that's gonna be a really difficult question to answer. But if you've got time in your hands, then we can actually get to work and start figuring that out. And so that is the real problem that needs solving. It's really just an income problem, right? So let's look at how much savings um, that are required in order to generate that. So I'm gonna give you a couple tables. You can screenshot this. If anybody wants the table, just go ahead and put comments or email me and I'll be happy to send these tables to you. But the way this works is you wanna be able to have enough money to last you 30 years in retirement. So you notice over here on the right-hand side in the, the assumptions, someone making less than $90,000 a year and they're gonna retire 65, 62 years of age and they need that money to last 30 years in retirement. So you need to be thinking that you're gonna re be in retirement for at least 25 years, so we say 30 years. So all you do here is you would take, in the example here, we'll use a 40 year old. So take the, the age on the left-hand side column and move across to the income that you're currently at, and that's the percentage of, of your current income that you're gonna need to save every year. So in the example of a 40 year old making $50,000 a year, they would need to put aside enough money that money would grow to about 865 or grow to they would withdraw over that 30 year period eight hundred and sixty five thousand dollars that's how that works so the real challenge for you is how do you put away 18 percent of your money every year that is how you work with a financial advisor is you get down to how could you do that in a different way i love working with business owners on that equation because much of the things that we can do is say, translate some of the expenses that could have been funded by their corporation rather than personally, and we get an immediate savings. But I digress, let's look at another table. So what if you're making more than $100,000 a year? Same scenario, okay? Just take your age, move across the table until you've hit your, your current income goal. That is the amount. So if you were 50 today, okay? and you're making $150,000 and you hadn't start saving, that's the whole caveat. If you haven't started saving today, what would you need to do today? So 50 year old, making $150,000, $0 invested, would have to save 59% of their income. Do you know how hard that is? That's incredibly challenging. So that's why it's important to get started earlier um, to make sure you have long enough room if you don't get started early enough. So any for any of you listeners who are young, you see the power of this, that a 50 year old today with zero assets has to save about 60% of their money to get to a point where that money will pay them enough income to last 30 years. So if you're younger, look at a 25 year old making 100,000 needs to save 11%, not 60%. Do you see how it's much harder? So it's easier for you at a young age you can put less in as a percentage of your income over a longer period of time. It makes it so much easier for you. Okay, changes in spending. I just want to spend a little bit of time to let you know. Some people talk about, well, what, what kind of expenses might I have? I wanted to help you with that when you're trying to think about how much money you might need in retirement. This is a good indication of how expenses, some expenses seem to level out and some come down. You'll notice travel at the top of the, that darker color at the top. As you get older, you're not gonna travel as much because you're worried about your health, you're worried about getting sick in another country, and that's um, very expensive if that happens. So you wanna make sure um, people just are, are, are less inclined to travel more. Travel maybe within a province, that would be um, that road trip we were talking about with seeing those seniors in the car. You can see the charitable contributions, healthcare, um, housing, those tend to be pretty flat line. You don't see them becoming a, a terribly expensive, especially in Canada that, you know, healthcare is, is largely it's paid for. There are obviously some expenses, but the main expense to healthcare for seniors is really about home care. 
So while you might be able to go to get cancer treatment, and that may not cost you, um, you will have a problem with home care. Those are the things that are, um, are more expensive. Now, there are also some medications that if you don't have some kind of health plan are not covered and are very expensive. So that is where you would see um, a real problem for some seniors in retirement. But again, it all goes back to a financial plan. It's so important that you start thinking about these long before you get into this situation. So I wanna share with you now um, how a financial plan works. Real briefly, this is simple stuff. If you look at this, this is a client. I meet this client. I say, tell me your story. They tell me their story. I take all their information. I put it into um, a financial planning software, work some of the numbers through, and I come out and I say, look, um, they and I think they already know the answer to this question. And that's why they came to me because they're worried. And the red means they run out of money. In this case, they're not actually running out of money. It just means they have to pay. They actually have to um, live a lower lifestyle. So if you think left to right, the green area, the person is working. That's their employment income. And then they hit 65. That orange area is a little bit of income that they still have because they retire mid year kind of thing, right? And the gray area, that is all government benefits, old age security and, uh, and CPP. And then the blue, the dark blue and the light blue, those are all um, their own money. So you think about that from 65 until 76, they're able to live their lifestyle, that gray line going across the bar, that is the lifestyle. And the expenses are going up over time because as they age, um, cost of inflation, things become more expensive every year. Every year, 2%. Some cases, other things become more expensive than 2%. But essentially, their lifestyle is costing more each year. And so their income has to go up each year to match the cost of those expenses. And so they're, when they first started out, let's say they had just above $60,000 of total gross income. And as they hit 76, it's about 80000 and the next year, they're not able to get 80,000. It drops down to about just below $60,000, right? So this is an important consideration because that person comes to me and they understand they have a feeling that their money's not gonna provide full retirement throughout their lifetime. And so the question is, what can we do about it? So we start talking about it, we come up with a number of different planning scenarios and we say, let's see if these things are achievable for you. Can you do these things? And if you can, it looks like this. Now those things, by the way, are not monumental. They are not difficult to do. They're just understanding how to use money differently, how to plan differently, how to mitigate a little bit of the taxes, how to save here and there. And these strategies help the person live a fully funded retirement. They have enough money. And all it was was some simple discussions and we go from this to fully funded retirement. Powerful. That is the use of a financial plan. That's why you employ a financial advisor, right? It is about the science of making money. That's our profession. It's a cool profession. Um, and when you get it right, a lot of people are very happy. They live great lives. And when I tell you, when there's enough money, a lot of things happen that are of benefit to great many people. It's not about buying milk and bread. It's about living in the right neighborhoods, going to the right schools, your grandkids having a, a good upbringing, having a healthy lifestyle, have, being able to afford money, uh, afford to, to eat right, to eat well. Um, those have, not having enough money, a lot of those things you have to push to the side. You have to choose things that you might not otherwise be too happy about. Another thing that goes with a financial plan is just through retirement options. So again, it's another page you just scan quickly and it tells you, option number one, increased lifestyle. I want 48,000, but can I actually have more money? And the answer is not really. The green is you have a little bit extra, but you really can't take any more money. This is the, this is the cap for this particular client. Could they retire sooner? Wouldn't that be a great question to be able to have answered for you if you do all these things and you come up with this number, and then you say to the advisor, how could I write, retire two years sooner? I'd love it to get out of this job two years sooner. Can you figure that one out? In this case, this person can't, but I've done plans where I've told the person I get you out two years, three years sooner. Here's how we're gonna have to do this. 
Um, could you take less risk? Option number three. So in this case, they need 6% and they're getting 6%. So there's a much of a difference in terms of the rate of return that they're going to have to get in order to retire. And so but in some plans I've done where I'll say, well, they only need 3%. Um, and they're getting eight, nine, six, doesn't matter, but they only need three. So there's some, there's some right away, some immediate information that says to this person, I'm worried about the markets. I'm, I'm worried that there's going to be some declines. I don't feel good. I have great anxiety. Is it, can we scale back the risk? Because I'm just worried. And I tell them, remember the financial plan, the financial plan said you only needed three. So if you like, I can scale back and get 3%. So that is the value of having a plan. The fourth one is asset allocation. How much money are you going to remember? That this, how much money are you going to need in retirement? Remember, this is the pool of assets, right? That, that back to that first question, how much money do I need to have in retirement? There's your answer right there. It's actually in black and white. We put it for you. How much of a pool of money do you need that's going to provide an income? And it tells you, this is the required capital at retirement. Here's how much money your portfolio is projected to have. Bang, right away. That question is solved for you. Know right away whether that's going to be uh, answered for you. So again, another powerful thing to have. Cash flow. Here's another example of retirement. This is um, an example of somebody that's making a lot of money. Look at more than $100,000 a year combined assets for a couple. It's not unusual for a couple. Um, and the lifestyle, that's they're living a great lifestyle. They're, they're spending it away. They're enjoying it. And they say, look, we're not gonna, we know we're not going to spend that kind of money. We don't have any intention of spending that kind of money. We want to actually have a moderate lifestyle. So we're going to live large while we're working. And then when we get into retirement, we're going to have a moderate lifestyle. Give me a plan like that. So here's one where their lifestyle is like this and then drops down and goes straight across a little bit of a drop. But because they were put money aside, you'll notice that the lifestyle, that gray area going a line going across is well below the blue um, individual annual uh, amounts that they could have had. So those are the the excess. So this is a completely different conversation that I have with this kind of client where we say, look, you're going to die with money. You're going to die with a lot of money. So this is an opportunity for you to think about legacy, charitable giving, what you can do for grandkids, your kids. What would you love to do because you're going to die with this? And so why pay all the tax on your estate? Why would die with it? Why don't we do something long before that happens? And that is a conversation that's great to have and to help people see their life could be a lot more meaningful to a lot of different organizations and the things and that they cherish most they can actually start to give today okay that four percent rule and i want to tell you why i wasn't in favor of that here is why i'm not in favor of the four percent rule again it's used to help you estimate your way to a number that's going to be useful for you to retire with but it's not actually practical look at it, a riff a riff is your rsp that you turn into a RIF, that's your income phase of your retirement asset, and you're paid based on your age. So if you took a minimum withdrawal out of your RIF, at age 65, it starts at 4%. Well, there you go, 4% rule. But look, as you age, you see those yellow lines, the government makes you, they're required to take out more and more money every year as you age. So when you're 70, it's 5%. When you're uh, 75, it's almost 6%. So that 4% rule only works for a few years and then forget it. It's not practical. So just understand that if you're saving almost all of your retirement assets in a RIF, and a lot of Canadians are, that you are going to, the 4% rule is not going to be useful to you. It's a, it's a, a ballpark, but it's going to not serve you well. The left-hand side shows you if you had a balanced portfolio, okay, 40, 60 percent, um, 40 percent uh, fixed income, 60 percent equity, you're going to be seeing here what that looks like for you. If you had 4 percent withdrawal rate, that's the gray line, and a million dollar portfolio, then your money's going to last 30 years. But if you had a 6 or 5 percent withdrawal rate, it's going to last about 23 years. And if you had a 6 percent withdrawal rate, you're actually going to have that money last about, what, 18 years? 
So think about that in terms of your need for capital, rates of return, withdrawal rates, 4% is actually not a good planning tool. Okay, three things that are disastrous for you. Three things you do not want to have happen while you are saving for retirement or in retirement. The first one is poor health. You can impact your retirement right away by making sure you exercise today, you eat well, you get with people that are gonna add value, not subtract value from you. That means people who don't believe in your goals, don't support in your goals, people who are adding stress to your life. I know you, I'm not saying you can't uh, uh, disavow your three-year-old is giving you grief, you can't do that. But what I'm talking about is surrounding yourself with people that love you, who wanna support you and see your goals um, your mental health, that's a big issue, but your physical health is another issue. You're seeing people who don't take care of their bodies, eating poorly now, translates to a really bad situation with diabetes, hypertension, overweight, heart issues, um, of blood pressure issues that um, it really causes a lot of grief. So the best thing you can do is think about having a great retirement is really about being healthy. So the three things that can derail you, the first one is poor health. And let me tell you about poor health. You think I'm just, you know, giving you some, you know, information that's, oh, that's nice. Look at this chart. 55% of all retirees retired earlier than their retirement date because they had a disability, heart attack, stroke, cancer, um, severe diabetes, kidney issue, Man, the list goes on. Alzheimer's, early Alzheimer's. All this is happening. 55% of everybody that retires doesn't retire on the day they, they thought. And then another almost 25, another quarter of the population retired early to take care of a spouse that was ill. So this is what forced people into early retirement. I have a video, I'm gonna to link to it right near, why you um, won't retire at the age you think you're going to. This is just one element of that total video, but I encourage you to watch it. Okay, the second thing is timing the market. So many people, so many people think, I've had this before with clients, and they'll say, I wanna get out of the market, I think there's gonna be bad news, I wanna get out of the market, I don't feel good about it, it's gonna be really bad, I want out, and I'm gonna buy back in when it's a better time, when the values are lower. And this doesn't, happen. It's a rarity. Look at this chart. If you look at the S&P 500, I'm giving you like the biggest one um, instead of just focusing on Canada, I'll just give you some good statistics. If you stayed fully invested on the left-hand side and you stayed fully invested, you got a 7.47% rate of return. This is from 2001 to 2020, okay? So this is a decent amount of time for you to look back and see what the markets were like. And so 7.47% rate of return if you just kept your money in and you didn't do anything, just let it ride. If you decided that you thought you were gonna to try to miss some bad news and get out of the market and you missed 10 of the best trading days, you look at the rate of return, 3.35%, 10 of the best days. And usually the set, well, it says right there, seven of the best 10 days occurred within two weeks of the worst days. So that means that usually when the market sold off, the market went back up and people tried to time it and they missed it and they ended up buying it at a higher value. And so I would encourage you just to stay invested. And when things go south and you firmly believe things are gonna go north, add to, don't subtract your portfolio, add to your portfolio. That's the time for you to really double down and put more money into the market. When you try to time the market, look at this. This is statistics from 2001 to 2020 annualized returns, the average investor got 2.9% because they tried to time the market. Terrible. So this is the problem. Homes did better. We know homes in Ontario did much better than that. And people will brag about, oh, I got 11%, 12%. Maybe they got it right, but a great many people are not. And that's why I say to you, look at the, the light blue colored area. This is the 40, 60, 60, 40. So which is about having a little bit more equity than fixed income or fixed income more than equity. If you just put your money in, that would be an example kind of like of a balanced portfolio. If you just put your money in a balanced portfolio and left it there, and I don't want to say you close your eyes, that's just negligent, but they did better, much better. So just think about trying 
I just don't time the market. It's the second worst thing you can do. And the third thing you can do that's gonna just ruin everything, and that is investing too conservatively. If you have um, with a 4% withdrawal rate, again, we go back to that using that 4% rule, and you look at portfolios. If you had cash, this is like detrimental, right? A million dollars in cash isn't gonna last you long enough in retirement, you're gonna run out of money. If you had a 40-60 split, so 40% of your money is in fixed income, 60% of your money is in equity, but you see more, um, it's a slightly more risk to you, but it gets you that 30 year mark, doesn't it? But then if you look at the other one, and that is a higher equity component and well diversified in the equity, but you get something that is well diversified, it actually runs out past the 30 year mark. That is the power of diversification. You really wanna live your life stress-free like this couple. Look at them. It's one of my favorite images when I think of couples and looking at a map and saying, where do you wanna go? That is the ultimate freedom during life, your, during your retirement years. This is the lifestyle you want to be living a life free of any anxiety about how you're gonna pay bills, being able to choose not to have, you know, around the world cruises, that's for people who make a lot of money. But for the average person, this can be you, where you're looking at this saying, where are we gonna go on vacation? And I know you're not thinking about, hey, vacation is not the only thing I wanna do with my life, but what I'm trying to impart to you is this idea of living a life free of having any anxieties about your money. Work with a financial advisor, get a plan done, invest properly, well diversified, um, with enough risk to your portfolio is gonna grow your money to the right levels that you can, avoid all these things that I just told you about, and really engage your advisor of saying, what if I was to do, give me like two or three options of what I could do to actually, because by the way, there's three options, there's more than three options that'll get you to the right place, but some involve risk, some involve other things that you might not qualify for or not be able to do. So you really wanna examine what are all my options to getting to that end goal um, in a way that's gonna satisfy my my risk appetite and, and uh, what I'm willing to do and what I'm willing to sacrifice. Those are the things I would encourage you to do. Okay, that was the end of this session. This was a powerful amount of information to give to you. I'm happy that you got right through the end so you could hear the number one thing that you could do. It's so important that you, um, you make the right decisions. If you have any questions, please feel welcome to put your comments below. Um, use whatever technology you need to use in order to um, send a message to me. Remember to subscribe to this channel. This helps get this information out to a whole lot more people because YouTube is going to love the algorithm of seeing people subscribe and like and comment. Share this with as many people as you think needs to see it. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks for watching.